you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, Mr. T. This is our third part on exponential functions. And in this lesson, we're going to look at a particular special kind of exponential growth called compound interest, commonly used. So what does compound interest mean? If you deposit money in a bank or in some other kind of investment, they periodically pay you interest. And you get interest not only on the amount of money that you initially deposited, but the accumulated interest that you've left into the account. This is called compounding. And so when we look at that, the rate of growth of your um, balance will be much greater than if it was not called compound interest. Back in my day, in olden times, uh, they some banks paid what are called simple interest, and you only got interest on your initial deposit, not what you got on the accumulated amount. Uh, today, pretty much everything is compound interest. Since this application is common, there's a special formula, but it's really the same as the exponential growth model that we used in the last, uh, the last uh, tutorial. So here's our model, and this is our Y, this is our A, this whole thing is our B value, and this is our X. So it's still Y equals AB to the X, it's just uh, some special values to make it easier to use. Now, when we do uh, compound interest, so again, A is our stands for amount. So that's the balance in the account after some amount of time. P is a banking term called principal. That's the amount of money that you deposit initially. And this is the calculation for our B value. R is your annual interest rate. And N is how many times the interest is paid per year. So if we had, say, 12% interest per year, now that would be a great interest, and it was paid monthly, then 12% 12 divided, 12 divided by 12 would be 1%. And if we convert that to decimal, we would have 0.1, so our, our 0.01, I'm sorry, 1% per month, so 0.01, we would have 1.01, that would be our B. So this is really just the special calculation for B, factoring in that the interest is paid more frequently than once a year our exponent would be how many times the interest is paid. Well, if it's paid more than one time a year, we have to take t, which is the number of years, times how many times each year. So again, this is summarized here. r, again, is our annual interest rate, expressed as a decimal. So when you get quotes from a bank, they may say we pay 3%, 5%, 2% interest. That's the annual rate, but they credit uh, interest to your account more frequently let's say monthly, so that means 12 times per year. T is going to be the number of years that we're going to leave the money in the account. And N will be based on some words about how the interest is paid, some common banking words, monthly, daily, semi-annually, quarterly. Most of these are straightforward. Some of you quarterly, it's not the quarter of a year is three months, it's there are four quarters in a year, so N would be four. So let's look at applying this. Now, when we go to use the calculator, we've got to make sure we use parentheses properly for here and especially for this exponent. Uh, we need to, unless we go ahead and multiply this separately when we put in the calculator, we need to put parentheses around that. That's one of the most common calculation mistakes that a number of you may tend to make. So here we, let's say we got a loss in our family, but luck for us, we inherited 25000 and we decide not to go spend that on some immediate gratification, but we decide to invest it for our future. And let's say we find an account that pays 5% per year, and we're going to leave it there for 30 years, say when we are retiring or maybe our kids are trying to go to college, and we want to know how much money we'll have. So we're going to work this a couple different things with different compounding intervals to see what effect that has on the final answer. So in this problem, our principal is 25000 For this first part here, our interest rate is 5%, which is 0 0.05. And we want to look at it for different values of n. 
Also, t is going to be 30 for 30 years. So we want to look at what happens when n is 1. That's the annual. n is 2, semi-annual. Say, I left out quarterly. Let's go ahead and do quarterly, monthly, and daily. And we're going to calculate our account value, which again is after 30 years. So let's get our calculator out here and get out of this graph and clear our screen. So now remember the formula is amount equals principal times 1 plus the interest rate divided by n raised to the n times t power. So in this case we've got 25,000 for our p times, and now we need to put parentheses here, 1 plus our interest rate, which we said was 0.05, divided by, now the first time we're going to use 1 for n, raised to, I'm going to put in parentheses here, 1 times 30. Close that parentheses and calculate. So after the 30 years in here, I'll just round these to the nearest dollar. So we've got $108,048 after the 30 years. Now let's look at what if the interest rate was compounded semi-annually. So we're going to change n equals 2 here. Now to recalculate, we can press second and then the enter key. It brings up the last calculation. And I want to change my n's to 2. So that's got to go to 2. And that's got to go to 2. And then I press enter. So now we get 109,000, a little bit more, 994 or 995 if I round that. I guess this should have been 49 here if I rounded. So now let's try quarterly. That's n equals 4. So second, enter, and I'm going to change this to 4. There's two n's in the formula, so I have to change it in both places. Now we've got 111,000 uh, and $5. You can see here, starting to get a pattern as we pay the interest more frequently, we're getting faster compounding, so our amounts are going up. Let's look at monthly. So let me uh, bring that up. Now this time I've got to use my insert function because I've got to change that 4 to a 12. So actually I'm just going to retype from this point. So it's going to be 12, close my parentheses, raise to the 12 times 30 power. It was just easier to overtype the rest of the uh, formula here. So let's press enter. Now we get 111, 694, and 365 da are daily. So we've got a change here. So our last calculation, I want to change that 12 to 365. So we've got 365 raised to the number of days in 30 years, 365 times 30, and 112,030. So with all things being equal, meaning the same interest rate, the same amount of money, the same time, you're looking to get the uh, most amount of compounding, so the most frequent compounding. Now the last part of this question was, well, what would happen if the interest rate was 8%? Now, I'm not going to go and recalculate all of these, but let's look at down here. Let's look at the daily at 8% to see just an increase going from 5% to 8%. Let's see what that would do. So now let's edit our formula here. So now I want to change this to 8%. So remember, this is our R right here. So we change that to 8%, 0 0.08. Makes a huge difference here. $275,507. So even though, you know, normally the difference between 5% and 8% doesn't seem like a lot, but when we're going out 30 years and with compounding, that small amount of interest uh, difference can make a huge difference. Now I picked 8% because that is sort of over the long term the average of what people get out of the stock market. Right now, if you could get 5% in a bank, that would be great. Banks are paying, you know, like around 1% right now. So if we had done this with 1%, this amount would be very disappointing. 
So, you know, as you get into adulthood and investments, you know, you need to make decisions about putting things in banks, which are safe, or putting things in the stock market, which gives higher returns, but there's also more risk. And have a great day and good luck with compound interest. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?